Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Joel Parker and this is Whiteboard Wednesday. An interesting topic that keeps coming up when I review staff surveys is the topic of the owner or the chief veterinarians having favoritism on working with certain people. And it's an interesting one because in my practice, I suppose I had favoritism too. But when I really look at it and when I read through all the surveys and they really look at a lot of practices, favoritism occurs because you like working with people who you like. And I like working with people who are right there to help me and who actually predict what my next move is. And in my practice, they would actually have their ear cocked to the exam room door listening to where I was in the cycle of the exam and talking with the clients. And so that when I walked out of that exam room, they would have the blood pull ready to go, the x-ray machine on, things ready to go. So think about that. The favorite isn't, isn't a personality thing because I like you because uh, whatever, I like your hair or something like that. It's because you're actually helping me as a veterinarian and where I need help, where you can speed things up. And remember, it's not that the veterinarians are God or anything like that, but they are the key limiting factor on the income and flows of the practice. You want to flow them power. You want staff to flow power to you. What I mean by that is that when you walk out of the exam room, they're there to help you. They're not off in the back where you've got to go and call them. They're not sitting, you know, texting on their phones or something like that. They're actually right there to help you. And ideally, they're predicting what you need and can keep the flow really moving. So a couple action steps for you. Favoritism is good as long as it's the right thing. Number one, for all the staff that are, that are watching this, and you can use this at a, at a staff meeting, number one, physically be there. So when the veterinarian, if she's coming out of the exam room, be right there, Dr. So-and-so, how can I help you? What do you need? Okay, be there for them. Second one, find out what the DVM needs. Go and say, what is it exactly that you need? Hopefully what you've done is you've even listened in on the exam, and you can tell where they are and what they're gonna need if that's extras or lab or what have you or a script and then finally begin to predict what they're going to be doing by looking even going looking at the appointment book let's say there's a cat that comes in that's got a swelling on his head chances are that's an abscess that needs to be lanced you could start to get the cold sterile or however you however you surgically lance those ready to go so that when she comes out of the exam room things are ready you can speed things up the doctor can just go in and do what they need to do and then go back and finish the medical record and the invoice okay all right so again here's your action steps number one be there physically be waiting for them when you're out of the exam room. Uh, secondly, find out what they need. And third, try and predict what the next step is to keep things flowing really well. Okay, guys, so that's the good side of favoritism on how you can help the veterinarians and speed things up and make sure that you're given the top, the highest level of client and patient care. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Hope to see you next week, and thank you for watching. Thank you, Dylan. You're welcome.